Hi, Math 105 student. This is a discussion of your exam number one review, the paper review um, that you were assigned before exam one. So I intend to cover nearly every question, just a little bit at least, so you have a better understanding and can listen as you correct yours. Hopefully you've had a chance to try this review already because then it will be for your learning benefit to go through it with me after you've had a chance. So if you haven't done the review, do that first or at least do a problem and come back and check it in the discussion here after you've tried. So to begin with, you'll notice that so many problems in this review are in different forms. If you remember the four perspectives to or four lenses that we look at things, they are, of course, algebraically. This course has a lot of algebra in it. Okay, so that would mean something like f of x equals 2x minus 7, maybe squared. That's an algebraic form of a function. Uh, numerically, perhaps we'll look at tables of points. For example, for this one, if x is 1, or let's make it 0 for first, 2 times 0, 0 minus 7 is negative 7, squared is 49. So that would be my outputs. And I could make a table of all these values like such. If x was 1, 2 minus 7 is 5, negative 5, and squared is 25, and so on. Um, verbally, perhaps this a function means something in a situation, or I could say um, what's going on in the function is I double all inputs, subtract 7, and then square. That's a good way to think about functions is as a verb. What does this function do to any inputs? Doubles, subtract 7, and squares. Okay? So those are three perspectives, algebraically, numerically, oh, and of course, graphically. So we have looked at what functions like this look like, but I can see from this function that the input for the output to be zero, the input would have to be seven halves. So I happen to know that this graph crosses the x-axis x-axis at seven halves, so between three and four, or it touches the x-axis. Okay, so it's an upturning parabola. It looks somewhat like that, but these are four perspectives. The point that I'm trying to get at is we look at things through four perspectives. Don't forget that. It kind of adds a nice framework for your understanding. And in this particular exam, the things we've discussed have been some prerequisite skills. Oops. Right, some prerequisite skills of factoring along with exponents. We've also discussed what a function is, how to tell what a function is graphically and uh, table-wise. And we've done quadratic functions. And we've done power functions. That's what exam one is on. So within these things, we've gone through, a, I mean, we've discussed those ideas through these lenses. So we've done graphs and algebra and tables and solving equations, solving algebraic equations for quadratic functions and power functions in the, with the understanding of what a function actually is. So hopefully that gives you some framework for all of the ideas that we've been doing. So onward with uh, some little bit of background here. 
with the factoring, you need to know how to factor out a GCF. So for example, in this one, I see that X is common to both terms. So I factor out an X, X times X plus 10. Oh, before I go, what does it mean to factor? How do I know that's in factored form? Factoring means to rewrite the expression as a product, okay? You know, so uh, something that's multiplied. That's how you can tell if something is in factored form. Oftentimes students confuse expanded with factored form. And this is expanded form while the second one is factored form because it's a product, x times x plus 10. So if you have something being added or subtracted hanging off the end, that's not in factored form. The Prob the whole expression has to be, the main operation has to be multiplication, okay? Uh, you need to know how to factor trinomials and trinomials, trinomial squares. So for example, this trinomial, let's see if it is factorable. Remember that the first two have to multiply to give me 3x, so I'm going to go 3x and x. The last two have to multiply to give me negative 2. But when I consider the inner and the outer products, they have to, those two products have to add up to give me 5x right there, positive 5x. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess and check, I'll probably guess wrong so that you see what happens, but I need a negative 2. So I'm going to put a 2 and a 1 there. And one of them has to be negative, one of them has to be positive. And I notice that my inner product is negative 2x, my outer product is positive 3x, and the negative 2x and a positive 3x do not give me the positive 5x that I need. So maybe it's just a sign change? Well, I'll change my signs. I still need that negative 2. That's my last terms multiplied, 2 times negative 1 has to be negative 2. And still again, I see the inner product right here. This inner one is positive 2x. The outer is negative 3x. And positive 2x and negative 3x don't give me the 5x that I need. So at this point, I'm going to change the positions of my numbers. And I'm going to put a 2 over here and a 1 over here. And I know they have to be opposite signs, but I also know that they that those inner and outer products have to add up to 5x. So I'm going to put a positive here so that I get a positive 6x and a negative 1x. So there's my factorization. And that is now in factored form because it's a product. It's written as a product. 3x minus 1 times x plus 2. Differences of squares, uh, that pattern if you think about it, is the same as this trinomial. So the inner and the outer terms must cancel each other off when you do that distributing. So I know this pattern is x minus 5x plus 5 because I have a negative 5x and a positive 5x to give me 0x. So that's how differences of squares are factored. And I'm not going to run through any grouping. Um, we might hit some in this review. Uh, so I'm going to leave that for now. Exponents know these properties and know them well. They come up repeatedly in Math 105. They're very important. And the best thing that you can do when you tend to forget a property, and you will, is to make up a back pocket example. If I take a cubed times a to the third, Remember, I could expand it as a times a times a times a, and then reason that I would have to add those exponents. So that's that first prop, property of products. Likewise, you know, if I have a to the seventh over, say, a to the fourth, I know that I have three more a's in the numerator, but I would expand that to see that I would get a to the 7 minus 4, giving me a to the 3rd, which is correct. I have 3 more in the, in the numerator. Okay. The exponent does 
apply to both of the product factors inside. So, you know, a times b to the nth is a to the nth times b to the nth. Be very cautious. An exponent does not distribute over a sum. You cannot do the same thing over a sum. a plus b quantity squared is a plus b times a plus b, and we use distributing of each one in that case. So we get a squared plus ab plus ab is 2ab plus b squared. So you can't do this power over a sum or difference, but you can do it over a, a product on the inside. And same with a quotient. Okay? Anything to the zero power is 1, and the reason for that, again, is because of the previous quotient power. If I have a to the fourth over a to the fourth, you know that that is 1, but by our quotient property, it's also a to the 4 minus 4. So this shows us that anything to the 0 is also 1. And these last two are ones that students often get confused, the negative exponent versus the fractional exponent. And I keep a back pocket example that, you know, uh, a to some power times a to that same power is equal to a. I would know that also the square root of a times the square root of a is a. But what times, or a to what power times a to what power equals a to the first? These two things have to be the same thing. So what plus what gives me one? And the answer is it, they have to be the same power, that thing would be a half, because a half plus a half is one. And therefore, a to the one half has to be the square root of a. So this is a nice, a nice little back pocket example, okay, for remembering fractional exponents. a to the one over n is the nth root of a. All right. Negative exponents, you can get those with your quotient property and say a to the fourth over a to the seventh. I know I have three more a's in the, in the denominator. So if I expanded this, I would have 1 over a to the third. But a to the fourth over a to the seventh is also equal to a to the four minus seven or a to the negative third. So a to the negative third is one over a to the third. These are ways to reteach yourself some of these properties when they you know, when you go astray a little bit and you forget them, rederive them, okay? All right, I'm going to pause now and start a second video for the remainder of your exam review problems.